Light and matter only interact when the frequency of light is in resonance with the frequency of matter. In other words, light is absorbed by something that oscillates at the same fundamental frequency as the light. Recall that electrons in atoms and molecules behave as waves, a property that allows for light and electrons to interact. These light and electron interactions only occur when their frequencies are in resonance, when the frequency of the light matches a change in the electron wave. Let's investigate. Picture an atom with only one electron. At the center of the atom is the dense nucleus with positive charge, and the electron exists as a wave surrounding the nucleus. In its ground state, meaning the way it exists normally, the electron wave of our one electron atom will be spherical and will not be moving. This, however, is not the only shape that an electron wave can have. Given the right amount of energy, an electron can be transformed into a wave with different shape and size. Here's a few examples. That's where light comes into the picture. Depending on its frequency, light's oscillating electric field has the ability to make the electron cloud jiggle, transforming the electron from one shaped wave into another. If the light's frequency is resonant with a change in the electron wave, then the electron wave will be transformed by the light. What are the alternating arrows in this simulation representing? The gray arrows moving back and forth periodically represent the alternating electric field of the light. These are the light oscillations. Let's keep going. Notice that the frequency of the light's oscillations matches the frequency of the change in the electron wave. This is called absorption. The light transfers energy to the electron wave and changes it. What do you think would happen if we used another light source, this time with a slightly lower frequency? That's right. Since this light's frequency is not resonant with the change in the electron wave, the light will not be absorbed. It will be transparent. If there is no resonance, the electron wave does not change at all. It remains exactly the same. This is just like visible light going through a clear window. The light is not absorbed, it just goes through. What would happen if this time we use light with a higher frequency, meaning higher energy? Even though this light is higher in energy because of its higher frequency, the light is still not absorbed because it is not resonant with the change in the electron wave. The absorption of light occurs as the oscillating electric field of light tugs on the electron wave and causes the electron wave to oscillate at the same frequency. This process does not happen instantly. It is a smooth transition that happens over the course of about 100,000 oscillations of the electric field of light. Yes, this still happens pretty fast, but just try to wave your hand 100,000 times. It takes forever. Just like waving your hand takes energy, it takes energy to get an electron wave to start moving and transform into a new shape. This energy must be coming from the light. The total amount of energy transferred by the light to the electron during this process is called a photon of light energy, h nu, where h is Planck's constant, equal to 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds, and nu is the frequency of the light. h nu is equal to E photon. This is the photon energy. UV light with a frequency of 2.5 times 10 to the 15 hertz can be used to transform an electron from its ground state to an excited state. What is the total amount of energy that is transferred from the light to the electron in order to accomplish this transformation? Recall that the formula for photon energy is E is equal to H nu. The UV light has a frequency of 2.5 times 10 to the 15 hertz. By plugging in this frequency and Planck's constant into the equation and canceling out our units, we end up with an answer of 1.7 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. This is the total amount of energy that the electron wave absorbs in order to transform from the ground state to that excited state. You'll notice that this is a pretty small amount of energy. Using attojoules instead of joules makes this answer seem more reasonable. In general, when discussing electron transformations, we usually refer to the energies in units of attojoules.